Hey, what's up everybody? It's Isaac from Alchemy here with another episode of the Devlog. This week, we're gonna talk about what's new on the platform, including a bunch of really cool changes to custom universes, trackers in Pirate Borg, and soon, fifth edition. Uh, we've got some UI and user experience updates to the gameplay side of things, some very cool stuff there. Um, and we've also got a public roadmap that you can view in the app. Uh, we'll also go into what's coming up next and I've got a few questions that have come in since last episode, so we'll go through those as well. Let's go. All right, first up, let's take a look at some of the cool new stuff that we've got in custom universes. I'm going to go over to the content universes tab and hop into my created universes, and I'll create a new universe just for this devlog episode. We will call it devlog4. So when you create a universe, you can select a game system uh, and when you pick this, it's locked in for that universe forever. Uh, so bear that in mind. Um, you can choose 5th edition to base this universe on the 5th edition system reference document. Uh, or you can choose Pirate Borg to make a custom universe within the Pirate Borg um, rule set and setting. Um, you can use none for universes where you may just be compiling assets together and you want to be able to create um, articles and upload assets and um, create scenes things that are usable across any game should go into a none universe. Um, and then lastly, we've got custom. That's what we're going to take a look at today. When you go to custom, you can name your game system whatever you'd like. Um, so we'll go with something really cool here, uh, like Isaac's awesome RPG. It's gonna be a new one we're gonna make up on the fly today because that's how we do it here on the devlog. Let's create that. As usual, we've got ourselves a fresh universe here with a module pre-created. Um, here's where the cool stuff comes into play now. On the NPCs tab, um, I don't have any NPCs here yet because I haven't created anything. There's a new button up here to edit the NPC template. And when you click on this, it's going to bring up the NPC template for this universe. For the whole universe, all the modules across it. Um, we looked at this a little bit recently, but uh, this is moved up into the down arrow box up there. And any changes that you make to your NPC template will be carried out to all the NPCs that you create in this universe. Um, so we'll give it an attribute like strength and another attribute um, willpower. Also new this week is the trackers and actions tabs here. Sorry, trackers is not new. Trackers has been around for, for a while. Actions is new though. If you wanna create a default action, probably doesn't make sense for the template, but it's there in case you need it. Um, we'll go with HP and AP again, because I like to do that. It sounds like a good thing to do. We'll go with eight for the value there. And you start out with eight as well. Make it six, why not? Five, Ooh. all right, there we go. Cool, now we have our NPC template created. When we go to create a new NPC in this module, it's going to use that template as the basis. So we've got strength and willpower preset for us here. We'll give this guy two strength and three willpower. And the trackers are already set up with the AP and HP values that I defined in the template. Now we've got actions in the mix. Um, prior to this week's update, you could only create the actions on equipment, but that's kind of unwieldy for a lot of custom systems. You generally just need a quick action here for things like, we'll give this guy a punch attack and go in, make that a dice roll that uses 1d4, 1d4 uh, plus their strength attribute. Um, so now we've got that punch on this character and it shows up here in our actions. I did not give it a description, I should do that. Cool, and now that will show up and make it look nice on the read-only side of the character sheet as well. Okay, cool. So that is the NPC side of this update. That template will carry through to any NPCs created here. Next up, let's take a look at the player character side in the pre-mades tab. So similar to NPCs, pre-mades now have a player character template that you can edit. Um, this is new this week. 
Uh, it looks the same for custom games. We've got the ability to add attributes. Oftentimes, player characters have different concerns than non-player characters, so you get the two different templates to work with. Uh, we'll give the player characters strength. Strength. Intelligence. Uh, constitution. And agility. You can also pre-fill things like features, notes, tags. All of this stuff comes along with the template. And maybe in our system, everybody gets a free action like punch. <laughs> and that's a dice roll. We'll, we'll say that the players are a little stronger. They get a, a d6 punch by default that uses their strength attribute. So we'll create that in the template. And off we go. Let's create a new pre-made. Um, we will call this pre-made character Johnny Hammersticks. Um, concept, he'll be a brawler. Have I used that one before? Brawler. We're using it again. And now we've got Johnny Hammersticks created. It came with the defaults from that template. We've got uh, the AP and HP values. We've got strength, intelligence, constitution, and agility. We've also got our punch action pre-filled on this guy. So we can go in and give him lots of strength and a little bit of everything else. Um, and he's got that punch action. It's pre-configured for that. So there we go. Now we've got our non-player character and our player character templates and pre-created characters ready to go for any game that we connect this universe to. All right, next up, let's take this custom universe with a custom system that we created and build a game out of it. So I'm going to head over to my library in the games tab, and I'm going to create a new game. And over here in the system dropdown, you'll see that there are a bunch of things in here, including devlog4, which is the name of that universe that I had just created with a custom system. So we're going to select that. And if I had created any scenes in that custom universe uh, module, I'd be able to select the module here and automatically pull those scenes into the game. I didn't do that, so we won't go through that here in this video. We'll call this game devlog4, and let's dive into it. I'm going to go ahead and add my test account while I'm here. Okay, so now if I play my test player that I invited to this game, um, I can choose from the pre-made that we created in that universe, which will pull in all of those things. Or if I just create from scratch, You'll notice that we've pulled in the punch action from that template that was defined in the pre-mates tab, as well as the trackers, 6 AP and 8 HP. If we look at Jim's character sheet, we've got strength, intelligence, constitution, and agility all predefined for us. So we've pulled in all the fields from the PC template um, as defined by the system's universe. So you can quickly get going with all of those fields in your custom games. So I'll roll Jim's punch, and it will be that d6 that we had defined, plus his strength attribute score. We can do the same over here on NPCs. Uh, by the way, this is probably a good time to note that we changed the panels in the game experience. So um, you probably noticed this change last week, but uh, these used to have just the name of the current panel, and then these tiny little dots up here in the top right of each panel where you would click to um, go to the next thing. And they had little tool tips to tell you what they were, but there was nothing else distinguishing them. Uh, we did away with that. Now it's all just these big tabs that tell you exactly what you're clicking on and uh, help you find your way around in the game experience much easier as a new player um, and even easier as an experienced player as we continue to tweak this and move things around. So I, hopefully you guys enjoy that change. All right, let's take a look at NPCs. So if I go in here and create an NPC for this scene and I create a new character, it's going to pull all those fields from that universe uh, template for the NPCs. So we'll give him a strength of three and a willpower of one. 
the trackers are already set up with 5 AP and 8 HP that we had defined, and he has no actions because they uh, we didn't include an action um, in the template. But we'll give him a fireball, which is going to do a D12. And we'll say that his willpower is used in the, the casting of this fireball. And we will call this NPC a cultist, because who doesn't like cultists as their bad guys? We'll play the cultist. We've got that fireball action. We've got everything that we defined in the template all ready to rock. Saves you a lot of time in creating a custom system and letting you use all that cool stuff in a game. All right, next up, let's take a look at Pirate Borg, which was recently updated to include trackers in the game experience, much like you're used to from custom games. So I'll create a new game here, and I'm going to select Pirate Borg from my system dropdown, and we'll go with the Pirate Borg Quick Start. I'll name my game Devlog 4 PB, and let's get in there. I'll add my test account, as I usually do. Come play. And I will create a new character for him. Let's call him Davy. Nice piratey name. All right, Davy's got a new panel down here, trackers. Um, so one thing to note is on the GM side of things, the trackers panel is in the bottom left. On the player side of things, it's in the bottom right. Um, so if you're uh, watching this as a player, just know that it's not gonna be here. It'll be over here. I'll show you that in just a moment. Um, but we've got trackers now, so if I open this character and open their their um, character sheet, I've got trackers. I can adjust Devil's Luck if I wanted to put something else here. We'll leave that as is for now. And we'll go ahead and add a custom tracker for ammo. Most pirates have some sort of ammunition stash on them, don't they? And um, other things that they typically have is uh, rum. Let's go with rum. We'll make this a pip tracker. We'll say you've got four swigs of rum in your flask. Yar. And let's take a look at that trackers tab down here. And we've got ammo and rum, just like we're used to from custom games. Hooray. Uh, okay, let's jump over to the player side. This is my test account. And here is the game that I invited him to. Okay, so trackers for the player side of things uh, can be found in the bottom right panel now rather than the bottom left um, so that you have that extra room to do things on both sides also we're kind of running out of room over here so there's that hopefully I'm not blasting you with music good um, okay so the other thing that's available we'll look at this one from the player side of things is the actions tab you saw this in the universe a few moments ago when I was creating a custom universe but now you can modify actions directly on the character sheet I'll call this one shoot and it's a D6. So now he's got his shoot action ready to go. You can view it on the character sheet. I should have given it a description though. Let's do that real quick. There, your flint block. Okay, so now on the, uh, the character sheet, we see the actions down here below the features. We've got shoot, fire your flint block and they're available on the edit, edit side as well for both the player and the GM. So you'll see all of that here. All right, this next one should get some of you pretty excited. You've long been asking about our roadmap and it is finally here in a publicly viewable way. Um, so when you come to Alchemy every Friday when we post the new um, updates for the week, you should be greeted with something a little bit like this. There's a new What's New screen that gets shown here uh, the first time you view a new release. Um, so we've got this What's New tab with the change log for the week. This is last week's notes. I haven't deployed today's release yet. Um, but there's a second tab here with the roadmap. So you can see a nice little ASCII art uh, progress bar for how far along we are for what we're calling release one, which is kind of our big version one release where we leave early access behind uh, in spirit and move into the very stable 1.0 life of alchemy. It's going to be stable, trust me. 
So we've got a legend here at the top for the feature roadmap. You can see what's in progress, what's upcoming, and what is complete. Um, so we've got a little table here with um, UX improvements that we're working on, things like panel switching, right click, that's coming soon, drag and drop reordering of things, a little spoiler for a question towards the end of this video, um, and keyboard shortcuts. We're working on those kind of UX user experience improvements throughout the app. We've also got tactical stuff. This is where I've been the last week. We've got updates to the marketplace coming. We've got a knowledge base that's gonna be super awesome um, coming with really great details on how to do everything. Um, and then we have uh, some other stuff like uh, playable NPCs, multi-track audio, lots of other great stuff coming here. And then we've got a list of everything that we have closed out so far towards this release one milestone. We are trucking along. So if you um, ever miss this and um, want to see it again, you can access it anytime from the left side navigation bar here under this flask icon. Just click that to bring it back up and it'll show you what's new um, and what's happening on the roadmap. Okay, that about covers what's new this week. We've also crushed a whole bunch of bugs. There's like 16 of them that have been fixed in the last couple of weeks and made small little adjustments to the interface, um, you know, pushing pixels around, making things look nice. Lots of little things like that. I think the only bug I'd like to really call out here that has been fixed is um, token position synchronization issues should all be resolved now. Um, we've got to the bottom of that. There was a problem with um, NPC uh, playing. There was a problem with games that had um, private GM roles enabled. Uh, that was disrupting the communication of token movements from the GM. So when they were playing an NPC, we were keeping uh, some of the information secret. And it turns out some of the information that we were keeping secret was the positions of the tokens as they moved them. Um, oops. Uh, that was my bad. It's all good now, um, and I think tokens should be in pretty good in in a pretty good spot for moving forward into some cool new features that we're going to be adding uh, very soon. And that brings us to what's coming up next. We are hard at work bringing Fifth Edition the awesome new trackers that you all know and love from custom games and from now pirate board games. Um, we'll be bringing those into characters and non-player characters alike. Um, the, we've got a few tricky things to sort out there in terms of how that impacts your experience points, your hit points, um, and making sure it all just fits nicely with the very crowded fifth edition character sheet. So rest assured that's coming soon in the next few days should be here early next week for your enjoyment in those fifth edition games. We've also got resizable tokens on the horizon. You'll be able to specify the size for the, the NPC or for the player um, in fifth edition and have that size correspond to their token size on the map. And for custom games and pirate board games, you'll be able to define the dimensions of the token um, via grid squares so that you can get those tokens resized for however you'd like them to be. Um, we've also got map adjustments coming up very soon. You'll be able to adjust the scale of the map uh, and move the grid around so that it lines up with what you're expecting. Um, and we have a bunch of sort of behind the scenes, under the hood changes that come along with that um, that should bring along some great performance improvements there as well. Um, other than that, we've got adjustments to the um, import and export process on the docket for this week. Um, I'm going to be making sure that all the, the new stuff ends up in those import and exports uh, and make those available for the D&D Beyond import process so that you can get all of your character stuff in and out of Alchemy as you see fit. Um, and then another really big one is um, UX improvements throughout the app and throughout the game experience. We're trying to reduce the amount of time that it takes to perform a task, things like viewing a character or rolling an action. Um, so look for some really cool stuff coming there. And we also have the marketplace that is overflowing with really cool new content all the time. Um, but we have so much more that we want to put out. We just don't want to overload this little screen. So we've got some really great organizational improvements coming to your friendly marketplace soon. And as always, we're constantly working on bug fixes and improvements to make sure that your experience is as good as it can be. All right, this week we've got a few questions to go through, so let's dive into those. 
Browley asks, will there be any free league modules for purchase in the future, like Alien, Forbidden Lands, Vossen, etc.? Browley, I've got some great news for you. Uh, the team is hard at work bringing free league titles to life. Shout out to Kerry, who's been working on Alien for, I don't know, like six years now, it seems like. Um, that stuff's coming very soon. We are most of the way through ingesting all of it as universes. Um, we have some more work to do in terms of building out uh, the actionable bits of it, supporting the Year Zero engine system uh, as well as we can, and um, lifting up a few other things throughout the app in support of that. But Free League is actually our first big content drop of this year. Um, coming this spring, we should have uh, quite a bit of Free League stuff on the marketplace. So keep your eyes peeled for that exciting stuff. All right, next up, Iosu asks, is there a plan to have dice with different faces? There are games where the dice have faces that are not numbers or where the result is different. For example, in the one ring, the D12 has the Eye of Sauron on the 11 side and its value is zero. Not interested in having the Eye of Sauron or Rune of Gandalf image, but it is having the dice value change where D12 is from 0 to 10, and 12 is an automatic success instead of a 1 to 12. Yeah, so um, we definitely have one feature on the near-term roadmap that I think will handle this nicely. Um, we need to support building out roll tables, uh, and I think that you could do this with a roll table. So, for example, build an action that has a roll table with 12 results on it, and when you roll uh, on that table, you could have the 12 map to an automatic success um, instead of just being a numeric value. Uh, that seems like one way where you could do this. And we're also building out support for a lot of new systems this year. And I know we're going to run into some situations where you need to have different dice for the system and count successes differently. Um, there's a few things that we need to do for year zero in terms of counting dice pools um, more easily than what we have today. Uh, so yeah, we'll definitely have at least one option, if not more than one option for handling dice with different faces this year. All right, last from Iosu again. When will it be possible to order articles, items, NPCs, premades, etc., within a universe? Um, so you can do some of this today. We'll take a look at the um, articles in this universe. We'll create another article, and we'll call this one Article 2. So the secret for reordering universe articles is to be in the list view. You can be in grid view, and you can be in list view. And when you're in list view, these are sortable. So you can just drag and drop them. Just click and drag. You've also got a drag handle here. That's always um, an easy way to just click and drag those around. But once you've sorted them how you like, that's how they show up for everybody who views this. So over in grid view, they're article two, then Q and A. Or if I go to list, they're in that order too. Um, the other tabs that you talked about, NPCs, um, these are not sortable yet. You can't change the sort order for NPCs or for pre-mades. Um, can you for handouts? Let's make a couple. No. Usually anywhere you can reorder things, we'll have this little hint of a drag handle here. Um, and it's usually a list because that's easier to work with when you're trying to drag and drop reorder things. So look out for that little drag handle anywhere. And if you're on a Mac, you have this nice little hand cursor. Um, I think Windows has a similar thing. Uh, and for Linux, who knows, you're just reordering things through your terminal anyway, right? Um, so items, I think the same story here. Uh, we don't have sorting for items yet. Um, but articles you can do today. NPCs, pre-mades, handouts, items. Um, oh, you can do scenes today. So we'll do scene one. And we'll do scene two as well. And the key here again is to go to the list view. So if you're in the grid view, these are not reorderable, but if you change that to the list and you hover over, you see that nice little drag handle, you can move these around as you see fit. So articles and scenes are orderable today. Everything else is not, but will be eventually. In fact, we might have that on the roadmap here under UX improvements, drag and drop reordering. I think you could probably count these in the same bucket. I think this is mostly for things in the game experience, um, but I don't know. I don't know. I think we'll do it everywhere, uh, everywhere where it's feasible and where it makes sense. So yeah, uh, expect to see that coming to the rest of these tabs soon.
All right, that wraps it up for this week. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, head on down and hit that like button, mash the subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos we do here. Also, feed the YouTube algorithm. It's very hungry, as always. If you're new to Alchemy, head on down to the description as well to find some useful links. You can get um, a free 14-day trial for Alchemy Unlimited. You can join our Discord, where there's over 3,000 helpful people chatting about Alchemy and everything else every day. Um, and uh, we've got the link to the Q&A um, form down below as well. If you have a question you'd like me to answer live on this video, go ahead and submit it there and I'll walk through um, whatever your question is with an asterisk on that. Uh, and uh, we'll get your, an your question answered. That's everything for today. Thanks for watching. Let's go play some games.